Today we're going to talk about restoring souls with divine guidance. Embarking on a journey to mend a shattered soul can feel a lot like trying to piece Humpty Dumpty back together after his epic tumble. Remember how all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again? Well, when it comes to fixing our own cracked shells, we have a superhero on speed dial, God himself. Picture your soul as this, a huge fluffy couch. Over time, life throws its curveballs, leaving the cushions saggy and the upholstery ripped. It's not the cozy spot it once was. That's your soul feeling a bit worn out. But hang on, there's some great news tucked away in a bestseller that's been around forever. Yep, the Bible. It shares in Psalms 23.3, He restores my soul. We're not talking a quick patch-up job. This is about a divine makeover, top to bottom. First off, to kickstart the heavenly renovation, you got to chat with God through prayer. Think of it as dialing up the best repair service in the universe. Yes, that's prayer. When you pour out your heart, confessing every little chip and tear, that's when the deep cleaning begins. You're not just airing out the cushions. You're allowing God to rejuvenate every fiber of your being. Then there's the Bible. Imagine your soul is like a smartphone. Then the scriptures are like the coolest app you could ever download, with constant updates to keep things running smoothly. Take David, for example. His life was like a theme park ride, full of highs and lows. Psalms 30 details his dark times and how he cried out to God, and presto, his morning transformed into a dance party. Letting those words soak into your soul is like hitting the reset button. But here's the thing. Soul fixing isn't a one-man show. It's more like a team sport. Enter your church crew. Think of them as your spiritual neighborhood watch. They keep an eye out, support you, and boost your signal when your spiritual connections get fuzzy. Every now and then you need to hit the pause button. Step away from everyday hustle, work, school, friends, endless chores, and just breathe. This downtime is called solitude and rest. It's not about being lazy. It's smart. It clears the line so God can whisper directly to your heart without any interference. And don't forget the super glue of soul repair, trusting in God's all-encompassing power. Even if your soul feels like it's been flattened by a semi-truck, remember God specializes in transformations and restorations of your soul. He's not just patching up for today. He's prepping you for a lifetime upgrade. So yes, restoring a broken soul isn't a snap your fingers fix. It's more like restoring an antique car. It demands patience, elbow grease, and heaps of faith. But here's the best part. God's behind the wheel. He's rolling out the perfect route for you. Just strap in and enjoy the journey refreshed and fully restored. Imagine you're on a big cleanup and repair show, but instead of fixing up a house, you're fixing up your soul. It's been through a lot, like a house that has seen many storms and now has leaks and broken windows. But good news, there's a guidebook, the Bible. It tells us exactly how to fix things up step by step. First off, we need to clean out all the trash. This means getting rid of old grudges and hurts that weigh us down. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31 through 32, Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even 
as God in Christ forgave you. And that is in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31 through 32. Think about throwing away old smelly trash bags. Forgiving people can feel just as refreshing. Next, we need to fix the holes where the wind and rain get in. This is the restoration part. Sometimes our hearts get hurt and those spots need extra care. Psalms 147.3 tells us, He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Again, Psalms 147.3. It's like patching up holes in the walls so the next storm won't make them worse. Now it's time for a fresh coat of paint, which in our case means adding new good habits. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 says, Finally, brothers, what is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. And that's in Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. By filling our minds with these things, it's like painting our inner house with bright, cheerful colors. Then we need to bring in new furniture, which means building healthy relationships. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 24 through 25 encourages us, and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near, as we see in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 through 25. Just like getting comfy new couches and chairs, surrounding ourselves with supportive friends makes our soul feel safe and comfortable. Once everything looks great, it's time to open the doors and show it off. This means sharing our story with others. It's what we call our testimony. Mark chapter 5 verse 19 says, Go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how He has had mercy on you. Again, that's in Mark chapter 5 verse 19. By telling others about our journey, we can inspire them to start their own repairs. Finally, to keep everything nice, we need regular upkeep. This is like doing small repairs before they turn into big problems. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Again, that's Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Regularly reading the Bible, praying, and hanging out with our church family helps keep our soul in top shape. Now, check this out. Imagine you're at the world's worst birthday party. Your balloon pops. Your ice cream melts before you can even take a bite. And to top it off, the magician hired for entertainment turns out to be your brother with a stick and a cheap hat. Now that's a rough day, right? But here's where things get interesting. Imagine if someone could turn that party around, making it the best ever. That someone in our lives, especially during our down and out moments, is God. He's like the ultimate party planner who specializes in turning gloomy days into streams of confetti. Now, when life throws rotten tomatoes at us, it's easy to feel like we're the main character in a sad, sad comedy where nothing goes right. Maybe it's something like a friendship that feels like it's crumbling, like a stale cookie, or something as small as tripping over your shoelace in front of everyone. Ouch, right? But here's the cool part. God looks at our pile of broken pieces, rubs his holy hands together, and sees an opportunity to create a masterpiece. Think of God as a cosmic chef. What do we do when we've got a bunch of random leftover ingredients in the fridge? 
We might see a mess, but a chef sees a recipe for the world's best leftovers casserole. That's how God deals with our troubles. We bring him our leftover worries, our broken dreams, and the friendship that we that went sour. And guess what? He whips up something real good out of it. It might be hard to see at the moment, just like it's hard to imagine that half an onion and some cheese could become a feast. But with a sprinkle of faith and a dash of patience, something good is cooking. In Romans chapter 8, verse 28, affirms the saying, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And that's in Romans 8, 28. This verse reassures us that no matter the ingredients, God is preparing a delightful outcome. Now let's talk about broken things for a second. Ever tried fixing a smashed vase? It's tough. The glue shows. Pieces are missing. And it never really looks the same. But when God fixes what's broken in us, he doesn't just patch us up. Nope. He makes us into something new, something often even better than before. It's like upgrading from a rusty old bike to a shiny new scooter with all the bells and whistles. This transformation is mirrored in Psalms 51.17 where it states, The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, you will not despise. And that's in Psalms 51, 17. God doesn't just repair. He transforms our brokenness into a testament of his never-ending grace. But here's the key ingredient. That is trust. Think about it, trust. Trusting God's process can be like wearing a blindfold on a roller coaster. It's scary. You can't see the turns. And sometimes you feel like your stomach has decided to jump ship. But just like that roller coaster, when you trust the person who designed it, in this case God, you're in for a ride that ends up being thrilling, safe, and exactly what you needed. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 through 6 advises us, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your path straight. Again, that's in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 through 6. These verses remind us that trusting God clears the track, even when we feel like we're upside down. In the Bible, Joseph is a rock star example of this. His life was like a soap, ox, uh, like a soap opera. Tossed into a pit by his own brothers, sold into slavery, and then thrown into jail even when he did nothing wrong. Talk about a tough break. But through that all, through all of that, he kept his faith. And what did God do? He turned Joseph's mess into a message. Joseph ended up saving a whole nation from starvation. That's not just about turning lemons into lemonade. That's turning lemons into a lemonade franchise. In Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, where Joseph speaks to his brothers, he explains this beautifully. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. And that is Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. This story illustrates how God's plans are always to prosper us and not to harm us, turning our trials into triumphs. So next time you find yourself at the worst party ever, or, the, or life hands you a bunch of mismatched ingredients, remember that God is the master at making the best out of the worst. Surrender your heart, toss your worries into his big capable hands, and watch how he turns your pain into something powerful. Trusting in God's redemptive power isn't just a good idea, it's a God idea. Imagine your soul feels like it's just been socked by a professional boxer on the gloomiest, rainiest day ever, knocked flat in a puddle with the wind totally knocked out of you. 
Now God's power is like the unbeatable coach who jumps into the ring, ready to pep talk and patch you up round by round. But here's the game plan. First, we start by ducking those swings of deceit and grabbing hold of the umbrella of truth. It's like throwing off a pair of soggy blurry goggles and swapping them for crystal clear rainproof specs. When you ditch the lies that have been soaking you to the bone and start soaking up the solid truth of God's word, your spirit gets a fresh warm towel drying off and he heating up to take on the world. Then we tap into the heavy hitting power of Christ's sacrifice. Picture Jesus as the champion boxer of the soul who's never lost a match. His knockout punch to life's troubles isn't just a one-hit wonder. It's the gift that keeps on giving, mending the bruises and cuts in our minds and hearts from life's harsh battles. Don't forget the training regimen. Spiritual disciplines like cozying up in a quiet corner, that's meditating, skipping a meal to sharpen your focus, that's fasting, or sinking deep into the pages of the Bible, that's studying the Word. It's like hitting the gym for your spirit, where every quiet moment or prayer pumps up your soul's muscles, making you stronger and more resilient against the next downpour. Lastly, there's the tag team effort of the deliverance ministry, like a cleanup crew that jumps into the ring when you're tangled in the ropes. They help you untie the knots of past hurts and send the lingering shadows packing with a one-two punch. It's like having a professional cleanup team ensuring that every part of your soul is spotless and rain-free. So there you have it, God's ultimate training and recovery plan for a soul that's felt every jab and tangle of life storms. By bombing and weaving away from falsehoods, clutching the truth, leveraging Christ's championship moves, undergoing rigorous spiritual training, and calling in the best cleanup crew, your soul can dance around the ring, ready to face any challenger that comes your way, rain or shine. Now we've been discussing three very important topics. Number one, the healing of your body. Number two, the restoration of your soul that I've been talking about today. And number three, the renewal of your spirit. These are three distinct processes, healing, restoration, and renewal. These are crucial to understand, especially when thinking about who you are in relation to Christ. When we say your body gets healed, we mean that any physical ailments or injuries that have been and can be healed. This could be anything from a small cut on your finger to recover, recovering from a bigger illness. This kind of healing happens in the physical world, the world we can see and touch. Your soul is the part of you that holds your feelings and character, basically, who you are inside. When your soul is restored, it's like getting a fresh start. Imagine how a makeover can transform someone's appearance. Similarly, when your soul is restored, it's like giving a makeover to your emotions and the way you react to the world around you. This helps you become the best version of yourself. Your spirit is the part of you that connects with God. When your spirit is renewed, it means strengthening that connection with Christ, almost like upgrading a weak signal between a phone and a cell tower to a strong, clear one. This renewal helps you feel closer to God and more aligned with his teachings and love. All three, your healed body, your restored soul, and your renewed spirit are essential to shaping your identity in Christ. They work together to improve how you feel physically, how you think and feel emotionally, and how you connect spiritually to God. Each aspect has its own role but together they create a balanced and whole version of you, deeply connected with Christ. This transformation not only affects how you view yourself, but also how you interact with the world and fulfill your purpose in life. Now today, we've been talking about how our souls can become like broken puzzles and the way we can put those pieces back together. This process is called restoration and it's different from renewing or healing, which we've also talked about before. 
Think about it this way. If your spirit is like a wilting flower, then renewing your spirit is like watering it and giving it sunlight, helping it to bloom brightly again. Healing your body is like fixing a broken bicycle. It's about getting the parts working right so you can ride smoothly without any trouble. But restoring your soul? That's more like cleaning up a messy room or repairing a torn up book. Your soul is the home of your feelings and thoughts like the pages of your favorite story or the special treasures in your room. When your soul feels broken or messy from tough times, restoring it means tidying up those feelings and patching up the tears so that everything feels whole and comfortable again. Our focus has been on this idea of restoration because it's essential. Just like you can't relax in a cluttered room or enjoy a book that's missing pages, you can't feel truly at peace if your soul is in pieces. By putting the soul back together, you're making sure everything inside of you is neat, complete, and ready for whatever comes next. This way, you can face life with a calm heart and a clear mind, just like stepping into a clean room or settling down with a real good book makes you feel settled and ready to enjoy. And let that book be the Bible. And that's all the news, weather, and sports. And I thank you for your attention.